Uh, so I guess uh, I should be emceeing here and introduce Christina Yesida, our um, OIDF liaison and a longtime community member via the My Data community. Um, yeah, I'll just let let her go from there. Great, thanks, Juan. Um, can can you see my video? Why is my video not working? I'm currently not seeing your video now. Weird. Um, well, okay. Well, we can <laughs> I I can just dance and pretend. I'll bend she. I'll just pretend. I'll, I'll <laughs> comment on what you say. I love you. Okay, you can go. you see my screen though? Yeah, that I can see. <laughs> okay, great. Um, okay, oh, okay, now I see my video. And I think yeah. earlier, but that's okay. So hi everyone, my name is Christina. Um, I've been serving as DIF and OIDF, Open ID Foundation Liaison. And the main work, our main work item has been selfish Open ID provider. So my mission goal today is it to introduce you to OIDF, um, show you what liaison um, holds, um, what potential it holds, and um, encourage you to join our work with Selfish Open ID Provider. So some of you may see um, how liaison has been um, established. We had a medium post on it. And at IW, usually we have, you know, Mike Jones introduced Open AV Connect and Justin Richard talk about OLA. So, you know, some of you have seen, have heard about these keywords before, but essentially um, Open AV Foundation's mission um, is to promote, protect, nurture the Open AV community and technology. It is, you know, most well known for as the birthplace of Open AV Connect 5.0 which is a simple identity layer on top of OS2 protocol. And it is, you know, really well known as one of the most successful um, product, um, authentication and identity protocols um, within the internet, um, which, you know, we're now trying to marry. As most of you know it as more from a federation perspective, probably. And really the goal here is to marry that world with our um, decentralized um, and self-sovereign identity world. And just, you know, continuing on the introduction, OpenID Foundation currently has 10 active working groups and OpenID Connect was born in AB Connect working group, which is um, the CLO circle you see here. And there, you know, a lot of work going on and just to highlight a few, um, maybe EKYC and Identity Assurance Working Group may be of interest of some. Um, and it's interesting how, you know, you see here, it says verified claims. And the idea here is to define a credential format that shows how the credential has been verified, which um, could be, you know, a very interesting um, complementary concept with verifiable credentials that um, most of you are, I'm sure, familiar with. And so currently the main collaboration has been working in this AB Connect working group. But for example, we are now looking at some porting protocol, identifier porting protocols that was born in Moderna Working Group. So definitely, um, if you think there is a synergy with what you're doing in DIFF and what is happening um, in OIDF, we're you know, more than open to consider um, other areas of collaboration. And just to you know, give an idea of um, different members of OpenID Foundation, um, you know, I think we see several members that are also in DIFF, um, but I think this opens up the door to many sort of new players. I'm sure we'd be excited to learn about um, the progress we are doing making in DIFF. So some of you may be familiar with Selfish Open AB Connect Provider um, JD profile. So this was a working item in the auth um, working group and it has been a profile to open ID Connect to enable the usage of DIDs to um, within within the open ID Connect flow, right? And because of some limitations of the core open ID Connect protocol itself, this profile, um, you know, 
had some probably redundant properties that were dependent on those features. And that's how, you know, this idea of let's talk to OpenID Foundation and see if maybe we can get um, the Core Connect protocol changed and modified. This idea kind of um, came together and this liaison um, came to um, reality. And so the current sort of vision we have is if we can incorporate the concepts that enable the usage of DIDs and ideally verifiable credentials, but since the Core Connect protocol, um, there would be no need for a profile anymore, um, which I think would be very exciting um, to achieve the goal of, um, you know, broader, initial broader adoption of DIDs and on, um, you know, to solve this sort of relying party onboarding problem. And, you know, I'm super excited that there, you know, are several implementations of that sign So um, i like super, um, I think it'd be a great start to learn um, how this sign work and help those implementations as well. So, you know, Connect Protocol is not a short document and the part which was initially relevant to this work, and why I say initially, I'll explain later, because you know we are currently in the process of defining the scope of you know this revision itself. Was um, but initially it was you know chapter seven, the self-hosted open ID provider, um, which is defined as a personal self-hosted open ID provider that issues self-signed ID tokens. You know, even this short summary short sort of implies the possibility of you know user gaining more control over the issuance of ID token, which holds the credentials um, with the user information. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with OpenID Connect, but I think, you know, because SIOP is not exactly conventional OpenID Connect, I thought it would be good to quickly summarize um, the different flows in OpenID Connect. So, um, you know, those of you who are familiar with Connect, please bear with me for a couple of minutes. So essentially, there are several um, modes and um, flows. Um, those are extensions of OS 2.0 itself, but the main flow could be, you know, simplified as you have a relying party, um, you know, a website who's who's trying to that you're trying to log into, and when you try to log in, it sends authentication authorization request to OpenID provider, which is usually um, a server, um, you know, hosted by an identity provider or a service provider. And, you know, it's, it's up to OpenID provider to, to do is user authentication authorization in whatever means it want to do, can do. Um, and once it does, an user gives consent to log into this, to provide data to the relying party, the authorization code um, would be issued. And until this, um, everything happens on the front channel. And then using this code, um, the relying party sends a token request to the token endpoint of an open ID provider. And from that token endpoint, relying party gets an ID token with which it can use for authentication and access token, which it can use um, for authorization. And, but what happens if an open ID provider can't have um, a server um, and can't have a back channel exchange, which is, you know, four and five in this flow on the left side. Um, and you know, the strengths of OpenID Connect is it also works very, very well with the mobile agents. And so, this, so one of the flows for such use cases was implicit flow on the one you can see on the right. And that's where it's the same when running party sends authorization authentication request to an open ID provider, but after doing a user authentication, it directly sends back um, an ID token. So um, the idea was when the OP or self-issued OP in now um, is able to return self-signed ID tokens. So this OP, which, you know, was hosted by a third party in this example, becomes, you know, self-hosted by you. Um, so this is what is currently in the um, OpenID Connect. And if we can use DIDs as cryptographically verifiable identifiers to, for a user sending back an ID token to prove possession of the ID token, we can el essentially eliminate the um, the um, federation redirects, um, arguably. But um, 
uh, right now, since the discussion has been going on for um, over, um, over, yeah, almost the entire last year, 2020, and now, and we've had the laundry list, um, um, and what emerged is there's this five scopes that we want to um, achieve throughout, say, selfish open AD provider um, revision. So one is um, what. So the names, you know, um, divisions are still under the discussion, but one is really um, portable identifiers, aka um, cryptographically verifiable identifiers. And just today in the Connect working group calls, there was a very interesting discussion where essentially, you know, identifiers, some identifiers are Essentially, the OpenID Connect identifiers are URLs, so they're tied to the domain model. And what that means is um, you can't really, you know, change from one provider to another. Um, and what DADs could do is, um, you know, it could allow sort of porting of those identifiers from one provider to another. But today's discussion is really around that essentially what could happen is abstraction of the private key control, um, because some dependency on technology, either its domains or blockchains or ledger, um, would still remain. And interestingly, so in OpenID Connect, in the ID token that's being sent back, there is this um, claim called SUP, which proves um, the holder to which the credentials have been issued. And a rough consensus of including DIDs in that sub property have been reached um, last year, and that essentially enables, um, like partly enables as portable um, identifiers. So that I think is a very good progress we made um, last year. And another big topic is discovery and registration. So because out there in the wild, there are um, a lot of open ID providers who are conventional authorization servers, right? So how does OP communicate that it's actually self-hosted? And how does your line party know that, uh, you know, it's not, it is a self-hosted OP? And how does your line party communicate that it also supports um, DIDs, for example? And, this has been not one of the most difficult um, questions and issues raised so far, because usually what happens in OpenID Connect is a process called dynamic client registration and dynamic discovery, where you exchange metadata, you have an endpoint where you exchange metadata before you even send request and response. And that just becomes very hard if um, SIOP is um, a native app or can't host a server for some reason. The current solution, proposed solution is to send registration parameters, you know, whether it support DIDs or not, um, by value or by reference directly. But I think the consensus is, is that it's a solution and not the ideal solution. But that's where we left it for now because, you know, we don't really see the um, solution. And collocation, and I, I have to mention that um, I put as this here because the work started assuming OpenID provider was on a native app, but as it progressed, it became clear that there are much more varieties to SIOP, such as you know, browser extensions or you know, bro browser wallets or even PWAs or um, SPAs. So, um, you know, there's also effort having been done to account for those variations. And then collocation model is where Reliant Party and OP reside on the same device, because that introduces some new um, elements around um, attestation. And credential issues, this is where um, Matter has done great work um, maybe which most of you should be familiar as credential provider, um, which allows so SIOP, as you have seen here, is mainly about um, verify, verification of the credential itself, right? So it assumes that SIOP or OP already has um, credentials or VCVPs it wants to share. Um, but what about the issuance, right? So there is also the need for the issuance and credential provider is one variation that exists 
um, where you can find, where Azure can find credentials to the key to cryptographic material um, provided by um, the holder or the user. So it's easier to prove um, the binding here. And the last one is verifiable presentation. So currently, you know, OpenID Connect only defines ID token in a JSON format. So how can, what are the means of sending back on um, verifiable credentials and verifiable presentations in the response? And implementations I've seen um, usually wrap VCs in the VPs included in the um, verifiable, um, in the ID token, excuse me. Um, and, you know, is the open question is, is that is that the best practice or is there something else um, that could be done? So it has really been a challenge um, to keep simple things simple while enabling um, complicated, uh, why, sorry, while enabling um, different scenarios and allowing extensibility and some um, complications. So here OZ sort of drafts that have emerged through the last year and we are actually having a special, a style of special topic calls. One is in seven hours, I believe, actually today is the first one. So discussion mainly have been happening is a connect working group calls, but because, you know, there's a lot to cover, as you have seen, I'm sorry, I'm speaking very quickly, hard to cover everything in 15 minutes. I'm, I'm about to finish. Um, so, you know, today is a plan is to really, you know, discuss the scopes, what is community's appetite? What are the needs? Uh, what are we trying to achieve? Um, and in what importance and what order? Um, and then um, introduce all these different documents that have emerged. So claim aggregation is around claim presentation. How do you present different claims from different issuers? Um, and self issued identifiers and social identity providers is to really build up on that SIOP and the scope is regarding um, this flow. Um, while smart credentials, uh, sorry, sorry, portable identifiers is, um, a scope would be a bit broader with um, larger interest and credential providers about issuance as I already mentioned and smart credentials is around um, discovery and registration. So yeah, a lot happening um, if you're interested. I'm sorry, I realize I covered a lot, but um, yeah, please, please reach out if you have any questions. Um, open information uses Bitbucket. Feel free, free to open any issues um, during the calls and any feedback on these documents would be highly appreciated by the editors, um, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 14 and a half minutes, perfectly under time. Uh, okay. Okay. So, sorry, I started you late, but uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, I would say thank you so much for doing this. This recording will be public. Uh, we'll have a URL for you soon that you can share with people that um, have questions about this. But I did want to announce that um, Oliver and Christina have volunteer to have an informal question and answer session and ask me anything in GatherTown. Uh, so do check it out. Um, if you are using it for the first time, the link is in the Zoom chat uh, and you can uh, follow them to the pink room for any questions about this stuff. Um, and we'll break for a minute and, and have a little uh, 10 minutes of networking time before the opening remarks from Executive Director Ruben Heck here back in this room. Great, yeah, um, just really wanted to highlight um, and thank, uh, he might be sleeping in New Zealand, but Tobias has been, you know, instrumental in driving um, this forward. And again, huge thanks to Oliver um, and Kyle, and of course, you, Juan and Balash for, um, you know, smooth release on and smooth collaboration between the two organizations, so. There's been, there's been a lot going on. And there is another parallel session going on in the other stage, the workshop stage. So uh, hosted by Eric from Corsimoro on uh, did method analysis right now. So th those who don't want to stay for coffee and chit chat, <laughs> so go, go there or go back to Gather Town and follow Christina to the event room one.